The Sustainable Construction Zone, a YouTube learning channel, presents How to Develop a Net Zero Carbon Strategy. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to develop a net zero carbon strategy. We're going to show you five simple steps to create one for your business. As the world grapples with the effects of climate change, Businesses across all industries are called upon to take action to reduce their carbon footprint. The construction industry, in particular, has a significant impact on the environment, accounting for a large portion of global greenhouse gas emissions. A net zero carbon strategy is a comprehensive plan that aims to achieve net zero carbon emissions by reducing the amount of greenhouse gases emitted and offsetting any remaining emissions through carbon credits or other methods. By implementing a net zero carbon strategy, businesses can play a crucial role in mitigating the effects of climate change and contributing to a more sustainable future. Let's start by saying this is not just an important issue for all of us, but it's an absolutely essential issue to the survival of all of our businesses and our way of life as we currently know it. This may seem dramatic, but there's absolutely no doubt, climate change is real. It's one of the defining challenges of our time. Global temperatures as shown on this chart are rising rapidly as a result of human activities, and the impacts will affect all of us. The construction industry can't stop climate change altogether, but we can have a significant impact on turning the tide. So if your company doesn't yet have a plan for addressing climate change and competing and winning work in the net zero economy, we can tell you the best time to start was yesterday and the next best time to start is now. Companies are now facing increasing pressure to eliminate carbon emissions from their supply chains, operations, products and services, and for capital providers to do that from their financed emissions. In turn they require companies like us and you, who work for them to do something. Bluntly, if you want to have a business in future, you need to do something and you need to have a plan. Perhaps you are still skeptical or not sure about some of the science behind climate change. If so, let me introduce Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock. If you've not heard of BlackRock, they are the world's largest asset manager with $10 trillion in assets under management. Every year since 2012, Larry writes to CEOs of the world's major organizations seeking to highlight issues critical to the health of businesses and the planet. In a recent letter, he asked directly how companies are preparing for and participating for the transition to net zero. The implications for companies that don't is they won't get investment, they won't win work. In short, they will go the way of the dodo. You might have heard of different scopes of emissions. These come from the greenhouse gas protocol which is a globally accepted method of accounting and reporting. Scope 1 are the direct emissions we make directly, for example from running our own boilers or vehicles. If we could see, touch, taste or smell carbon emissions, we would be able to observe it being produced right there in front of us. Scope 2 are emissions we cause indirectly from the generation of electricity. We have a direct relationship with the use of energy, for example when we flick on a light switch, we are demanding more energy and therefore more emissions are created, but the generation of the power and therefore the emissions created happens elsewhere. Many organizations are becoming obligated to report on emissions or do so voluntarily according to the protocol. As a minimum it must cover these two scopes. The third scope covers other indirect greenhouse gas emissions. These are the consequence of the activities of a company but occur from other sources. It might include the emissions relating to the extraction and processing of material, the transport of it to site, the use of it as a product for a period of time, and the eventual emissions created at the end of life, for example from recycling or disposal. Some of your scope 1, 2 or 3 emissions will be part of your client's scope 3 emissions, and some of your scope 3 emissions will be some of your supplier's scope 1, 2 or 3 emissions. So how do we do this, and where are you in your carbon reduction journey? Step 1 is to understand where we are. Firstly who is going to do this for you, do you have someone in the company already, or do you need to recruit someone, or perhaps you will work with a consultant to help you? Who is it that manages the data? To understand where you are we need to measure. We're going to need to collect that data, for example, energy bills, 
information about procurement spend and details of business travel. We will need to categorize the data and calculate what is scope 1, 2, and 3. The Greenhouse Gas Protocol and ISO 14064 provide methodologies we should follow to do this. Having collected the data, we can produce a carbon footprint report. This should identify how the emissions were calculated and make some recommendations for improvement. Lastly, and this is an optional but recommended step, we should gain some independent assurance of the data. An external assessor can verify the data and provide a statement to give confidence to others that the numbers presented are real and correct. Having completed the carbon footprint, we can compare ourselves to others. How do we measure up against our competitors? Is there anything they are doing we are not? We also need to now think about and develop a target. Many organizations are doing this to align with science-based targets, which is a rigorous and robust process to validate the targets as being aligned with the Paris Agreement to limit climate change to 1.5 degrees centigrade. We should consider long-term targets to achieve net zero carbon emissions and some interim targets along the way, so progress can be measured and assessed. Energy, water, waste and travel are all likely components of any carbon footprint and we should identify other targets that can be set to support the overall goal. Having set targets, you may want to identify other initiatives such as RE100, the UN Global Compact, Race to Zero and science-based targets that your organization should join that enable recognition of your efforts and collective action towards shared common objectives. The next steps in the journey are to develop plans to reduce carbon. By looking at the data you can identify what sources of emissions are important to reduce. The plan could include specific actions, for example to procure more green energy. It may also involve actions to eliminate fossil fuels, increase electric vehicles, create policies, identify the need for offsetting and budget, and creating requirements for suppliers. When thinking about carbon reduction, a hierarchy approach is helpful. This example is taken from the PAS 2080 Carbon Management in Infrastructure Standard. The best option is to avoid carbon being created altogether. One thing we can all do is challenge the way of doing things, appropriately of course. We could ask, does it need to be done at all? After this, the next step on our hierarchy is to make best use of things, optimize the efficiency of what we have got, or use to minimize the carbon impacts of using it. The third item in the hierarchy is to build cleverly. Are there low carbon materials that could be used? Or ways to reduce the use of resources and therefore embodied carbon? The ability to influence this on a project will depend on things like the contract type and where we are in the design process, but it should not stop us from trying to improve and reduce carbon. The last point on our hierarchy is to build efficiently, perhaps using new construction technologies. Having done all of that, it's important to communicate targets once they are signed off with relevant stakeholders. You might want to think about who you need to communicate with, why you need to communicate with them and how. Stakeholder mapping is a useful tool here to help determine the level of engagement needed. Annual reports or a standalone greenhouse gas or ESG report should include this data and progress towards targets. A communication strategy will also help keep people up to date with developments and encourage buy-in towards some of the actions you are trying to achieve. Lastly, you might want to declare your performance through mechanisms like the Carbon Disclosure Project. This is an annual submission and enables you to receive an audited score and grade on your carbon performance. In terms of implementation, it's essential to have the right resources and budget to be able to deliver on actions. It's a good idea to prioritize things so that low or no cost initiatives or things you know will definitely produce results are implemented first. By making some good progress you can encourage people to continue the journey. You may need to develop business cases for investment in more complex or capital intensive ideas. Don't forget about waste either. Avoiding and reducing wastes is not only more efficient, it will directly impact your bottom line as well as save carbon. Single-use plastics are one type of waste that most businesses produce and, or handle, and are of global environmental concern, so is something you may well want to include specific actions on. The success of any program is down to people, so it's important to train and upskill them.
you may find you have some enthusiastic people who want to get involved. Channel their enthusiasm and encourage them to share ideas through a network. Lastly, keep up a drumbeat of communication. There are really two things necessary for change, visibility and consequences. Communicating how you are doing through regular reporting helps keep it in focus, reminding people it is important and how the work they are doing contributes to achieving the objectives. After reducing your climate impact, offsetting can be an effective way to reduce emissions globally and get to net zero, as a step towards achieving absolute zero emissions. We'll cover offsetting in a future video, but briefly the aim of offsetting is to use carbon markets to neutralize or offset emissions, retiring carbon credits generated by projects that are reducing greenhouse gas emissions elsewhere. Of course, it is critical to ensure, or verify, that the emission reductions generated by these projects are actually occurring. Schemes that are verified through either the verified carbon standard or the gold standard are examples of that. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this useful and interesting, and if you did, please like and subscribe to flag this to other YouTube users who may benefit. Please feel free to leave any comments.